Hey everybody, why is it that some of your playing companions can practice once or twice a month and their game seems to constantly improve, yet you practice almost uh, every day or every week and your game seems to deteriorate? It might be something so simple as your swinging contradictory to the way your body is and a little thing called matchups. <laughs> Okay, so in the intro I mentioned matchups, and what I meant by that was you have to match up the way that you're swinging with the way that your body's built. And if you try to do something contradictory, whether you're adhering to a theory or someone might have given you some misinformation or how to swing uh, incorrectly that doesn't match up with the way that your body's built, you're going to find that your improvement uh, uh, it comes extremely slow. If not, goes in reverse order and you actually get worse, and uh, you might even hurt yourself. So uh, I'm going to go over three types of swings today. Uh, it's for uh, three different body types so that you can check against yourself if you're trying to do something contradictory to the way that you're built you can find out you can fix it uh, you can get yourself back on track and your game and your enjoyment can both go up okay so the first type of, of uh, swing body type that we're going to talk about is a very lean very limber very usually very long limbs type of swing uh, this would, uh, that's the body type that this swing uh, would work best with or you would match up best with this swing uh, people out on tour would be someone like uh, Ian Poulter or Bubba Watson. And if you ever watch any of them swing, and this goes to this type of build, is the ball position is usually forward in the swing. The grip tends to be neutral to slightly weak on most players that this fits into. Most importantly, their pivot is fixed, meaning their head does not move the entire swing. It might rotate, but the axis stays very fixed. They're swinging around one axis, meaning their spine. What's most noticeable about people that have this type of swing is not only their axis, but their hands also get very high in the swing. So you can see that my hands are pushing at height, uh, head level or above it, okay? Because of that, your hands and the club head had a further or a longer distance to travel, which means golfers of this type usually can hit the ball longer because they have such a big arc, uh, but they also tend to, uh, when they're off, to be really off. So um, high hands has its benefits and also has its detriments. But uh, because they have such a long distance for their hands to travel back to the ball, the ball position needs to be further forward in the stance, okay? Because you have to have time for the club head to square up, and these type of swingers will typically have a little bit of lateral motion in their swing as they start their downswing. So that's the first type of swinger, usually thinner, you have more flexibility, and you swing around one fixed pivot point, the hands are higher, the ball position's forward, you, can, you have the potential to hit it longer and be spot on some days and on some other days, if your timing's not there, you might have a tendency to spray the ball a little bit more. Okay, the second type swinger would be more of your average build. So you have decent flexibility, you have decent strength, you're not too big, you're not too thin, uh, and this would be considered somewhat of the modern swinger because everything uh, tends to look like it's in balance more. Your grip is, is neutral to slightly strong on these players. All right, the ball position would come under the left side of the face and not too far forward in the stance. As such, your stance would be about shoulder width apart. Uh, you are, the, the, this type of player is getting most of their, their ball striking and their ability to hit the ball uh, any whatever distance they're going to hit it out of the leverage in their swing. So at the top of their swing, the club head is going to be somewhere over their right or their rear shoulder, either above it or slightly behind it, okay, as the left arm stays straight. The club that does not have a tendency to get too long, okay? Like I said, everything seems to be in balance. Um, so you, they have a neutral grip, neutral to strong. The ball position slightly back from, from the thin type player. The hands are balanced and over the right shoulder. And as a transition, it's very subtle. And the, the rear leg and rear heel tend to stay where they are until the hands and the handle get there. And then everything turns forward together, okay? Nothing outraces the other. Nothing's playing catch up to the other ones. That's called a leverage swinger, and again, that's for people who have builds, medium build, medium strength, medium flexibility. Okay, the third type of swing is for the people who are thick in the chest, thick in the hips. They have a lot of strength, but they might not have the flexibility that some other players would have, and this one is co most commonly referred to as the width player. So with a width player, the, the first thing that you're gonna notice is the ball position is going to change to where the back of the ball is at the middle of the stance. And because of that, uh, the, the grip will tend to be on the strong side where you'll see at least two and a half to three knuckles of the lead hand and the right hand will be more underneath the club as such. Now, the reason that is is because they don't have the flexibility to make a big pivot. So 
where they're going to get most of their, their power from is their strength. Because they don't have the ability to turn or, the, or they don't have the flexibility to turn and make a big pivot, what they have to do is have a little bit of a closed stance, meaning their feet are aligned a little bit out to the right of the target. This allows them to cheat in their backswing, okay? Their shoulders can get a little more turn in relationship to the ball, and they're getting most of their, their uh, power from the width in their swing and from the strength in their hands and arms and as they unwind. The width type of player will have three pivot points. They're going to swing over both their hips as they make their weight shift, but because of the girth of their body from the top of their swing, as they start, it's going to look like they're coming over the top, but it's really the upper body realigning and getting the hands back in front of the chest before they make their unwind. Now, the reason that the ball position comes back is you have to have the matchup of the stronger grip. So if there's a stronger grip, the club face is going to square up sooner, which means that ball has to be back towards the middle of the stance. So that's called the width swing. Okay, so we just went over three different swings for three different types of players. You have the thin people who have a lot of flexibility. That's often referred to as the arc swing. Again, one fixed point of movement, high hands, ball position forward in the stance, and a little bit of lateral move to allow the time for the hands, arms, and body to all sequence up as they come in impact and then go forward. You have the leverage swinger, which is more equalized on everything. Ball position comes back a little bit, grips a little stronger. Hands are a little lower in the swing, but further as far as the depth behind their right shoulder, everything comes into the swing, balanced into the ball, and that's where that power comes from. And then you have the wood swinger that are very thick chested, thick hip, robust, stance slightly closed, stronger grip, ball position back in the middle of the stance. They get all their uh, distance and so forth from their strength and the width in their swing. So. You can kind of classify yourselves based off your build into one of those uh, three swing types. Uh, if you have comments or you have issues with some of that, post in the comments below, subscribe to our channel, or send us an email at info at thegolfparadigm.com. I hope this helps you get your game back on trap, get your matchups closer together, and allows you to play, uh, hit the ball better and have a lot more fun playing the game. Hey everybody, Pete here from The Golf Paradigm. Thanks for watching the video. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to watch more videos or subscribe, you can do it right here.